Hello. May I first say that um, anyone who believes my words do so at your own discernment. I do not want to re be responsible for the karma if I am wrong later down the line. <clears throat> now imagine, imagine you're God. Okay? It's not a sin just to sort of speculate upon if you were a God and you'd created these seven billion souls uh, that were going to be existing for eternity and uh, you'd created a universe and, an, and a nice planet for them to live on but you knew that they needed to learn some lessons in order to live for eternity and you create the first two humans in a sixth sphere state 15 foot tall, awesome, beautiful creatures and uh, needing only water to live on. Okay, and you put them on the earth. Now, God is an all-loving God. And he isn't going to say to the first two humans, you're not allowed to do this. They have free will. We have been given free will. Now, so first of all, we come to the Bible. I'm using this, the New English Bible, it's very good. And we start here with man's disobedience. The serpent was more crafty than any wild creature that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Is it true that God has forbidden you to eat from any tree in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat the fruit from any tree in the garden, except for the tree in the middle of the garden. God has forbidden us to eat or touch the fruit of that. If we do, we shall die. That is a lie. The serpent said, Of course you will not die. That is true. God knows that as soon as you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. Well, that's not quite true either. But your eyes will be opened, knowing both good and evil. Well, that's true. Now, wouldn't God want us to know about good and evil? He, he's created us. He wants us to learn. Okay? So, in order to learn, we need to know what's right and wrong. So, why would he ever forbid that? So... The truth is that we are allowed to do what we want, and the truth is that this Bible has got lies in it right from the beginning. Now, who put them there? I will go into that later. Okay, so, you know, then they, she saw it was good to eat and stuff like that. Now, the original sin that Adam and Eve, or Ammon and a man, made was that they wanted to be gods. They wanted to be equal to God. That was the original sin. So the first thing we had to learn is that God is like way, way, way above us. We are babies. Our souls are in a baby state. We're right at the beginning. We need to learn all these things. Anyway, so I wanted to uh, skip over that a bit because that's been done. But this um, this serpent, you know, well, anyway, I like I said, I'll skip over that. Da 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 da. Uh, right. So then um, Adam and Eve had a child. Okay? Cain, and then they had Abel. So, so there's the original sin that's being created by the first two humans. Alright? So that is going to get passed down onto absolutely everybody. And that's the first lesson. We are not equal to God. We are children of God and therefore need to learn from God, need to be, uh, you know, humble. Humble to God, right? Humble to learning. Humble that we are in the beginning stages. Now, God would have known that, <clears throat> you know, that isn't going to be the only sin committed that, you know, more sins must be committed. So we come to the the next sin, when Cain kills his brother and then lies about it. Now, God, Cain, basically there are laws of the universe in place, so that, you know, Cain's life 
turn to shit afterwards, after he'd done this crime, because of karma. But I think, and God marked Cain and said that anyone who does anything to you will be avenged sevenfold. Let's see how he's worded. If anyone kills Cain, Cain shall be avenged sevenfold. Now the way it says Cain there, it's almost like, I know it doesn't say Cain and his descendants, but again, that's, I think, because of the lies in the Bible, <clears throat> again, this has been manipulated not to give us the clue that it is Cain and Cain's descendants. Cain will be avenged sevenfold. And it says kill, but it wouldn't just be kill, so it would be anyone who does anything to Cain will get that avengement sevenfold. So if someone slaps Cain round the face, they will get that karma back on them seven times as much. We and Cain and Cain's descendants. So in the early days, you know, that when there were a few hundred people around, because um, Adam and Eve or Ammon and Amman would have had lots of children. Abel obviously didn't because he was killed. Cain had lots of children and then his children had lots of children and the same same for the others. After about the year 130, Adam and Eve had Seth, or this is what it says in the Bible. So there would have been lots of people around. So they would have started to notice that um, anyone does anything to Cain's descendants, you know, they get they get the karma back seven times as much. And I believe God did this in order to quicken quicken the process of us learning. And it's written here, that element has stayed in the Bible for all this time for us to see. Okay, so then we, we're moving on. We're only on Genesis 4. We're quite, quite near the beginning. Now, Cain's descendants, it tells us here, Cain lay with his wife, and then she conceived and bore Enoch. Cain was building a city which he named Enoch after his son. Enoch begot Irad. Irad begot Mehujuel. Mehujuel begot Methushuel. Methushuel begot Lamech. Lamech married two wives. Okay, now we've got the third sin. Okay. Because that's a sin, because we're all being given a soulmate. So obviously if you're taking two wives, you're taking somebody else's soulmate. That's not quite fair, is it? Called Ada and Zillah. <clears throat> uh, it says about Ada, gave birth to some people. Where does it say that he was... Uh, all right. Cain may be avenged seven times... But Lamech, 77. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, listen to me, wives of Lamech, mark what I say. I kill a man for wounding me, a young man for a blow. Cain may be avenged seven times, but Lamech, 77. Alright, well it's in there anyway. So... And only God could do that. So now, you know, the, the stakes are rising. God wants to quicken the process. So there's... If you think by the time we've got... Say say Cain is probably a tenth of the world. Alright? Let's just say that, for instance. That descendants of Cain now in the world would be about one-tenth, for example. Say... Descendants of Lamech would be probably about one hundredth because there were a few kids in between that had other children. So, you know, Lamech's descendants, about one hundredth of the world. So there are every one hundred people out there, if you do harm to them, you're going to get the karma 77 times back. So <clears throat> you wonder why sometimes people walk out and get run over by a bus, maybe they did something bad to one of Lamech's descendants. Okay? Right? This is this is God's way of quickening the process. Now 
as we get, I mean, I, <coughs> I've written a map about this, but um, so the other, the other child that Adam and Eve had that's mentioned in the Bible was Seth. Now they had others, so it wasn't just these. Now Seth was 105 years old when he begot Enosh. After the birth of Enosh, he lived 807 years. He had other sons and daughters. He lived 912 years, and then he died. Enosh was 90 years old when he begot Canaan. After the birth of Canaan, da -da, Canaan begot Mahalalal. And then after Mahalalal, there was Jared. And after that, there was Enoch, another Enoch. Now, Enoch's quite special. Enoch was 65 years old when he begot Meth Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Oh, he had others. Okay. He lived 365 years. That's the shortest so far. Now, Adam's still alive at this point. Having walked with God, Enoch was seen no more because God had taken him away. So what do you think God and Enoch talked about for 300 years to then eventually, must have been Enoch's will, that God take him away? Well, it seems to me that it might be that, you know, he's looking over at Cain's line and he's saying, well, you know, this is making them pretty powerful, you know, we do anything to Cain's line and we get really bad karma. You know, we have to be nice to them in a sense. Well, we're nice to them and maybe they get 77 times the, the greater, right? So think about that. And, you know, maybe he wasn't too happy about that. You know, maybe he thought that was unfair. Um... I can only speculate. I believe there is a book of Enoch. I'd like to hear it. Uh, that'd be my next thing. But let's just say for speculation, Enoch wasn't quite happy with this arrangement. And after all that time spending with God, said, actually, you know, I'd just rather go and live in the spirit world. Methuselah was 187 when he begot Lamech. So this is a different Lamech. Not Lamech in Cain's line, this is Lamech in Seth's line. After the birth of Lamech, he lived for 782 years and had other sons and daughters. He lived 969 years. So you see, they're living quite long. Lamech was 182 years when he begot a son. He named him Noah, saying, This boy will bring us relief from our work and from the hard labour that has come upon us because of the Lord's curse upon the ground. Well now you see that's a bit, yeah, you see because the God cursed Cain that he wouldn't get anything from the ground. So they're not even in Cain's line. So you know already here we've got to watch out for alterations because we know they're in there right from the beginning. Now I actually believe it's <clears throat> is probably, so right, so Enoch goes, Enoch's son, Methuselah, he's, you know, he's obviously aware of Enoch's issues, um, but, you know, he has a slightly different take on it, so he gives birth to Lamech, and maybe Lamech knows about this, and obviously when he gives birth to Noah and all this stuff about Noah will bring us relief, so this is maybe their plan to curse, stroke, reward their own line and hoping perhaps that their curse as Cain's was 7, Lamech's was 77 they want theirs to be 777, seven, seven, right? So that everybody has to treat them really well. <clears throat> now, Lamech lived 777 years and then he died. Right, so he doesn't say how old he died. Noah was five hundred years old when he got Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So it could be that Lamech said to Noah, "Look, when I'm seven hundred and seventy-seven, you kill me, and then we'll get, hopefully, get this curse of seven seven seven." So let's just assume that it didn't work. Now it does get interesting here. 
When mankind began to increase and spread all over the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of the gods saw that the daughters of men were beautiful. So the sons of the gods now, it, I believe, because we're now into about uh, 1500, so, so some of the um, people have died, you know, Adam's died, <coughs> and quite a lot of others have died, so they're now in the spirit world and potentially affecting because in the spirit world you can still you know you can still sort of well as we know right spirits can affect us still so i think that's what they're referring to as the sons of gods they are the people who have passed into the spirit world and maybe they're not in such great condition and and um you know maybe they haven't and repenting they die like old and it's taken them a long time to become like um, like in their prime again to because that's what happens when you when you die if you die very young you age until about the age of 25 your prime if you're very old you get younger and younger and younger if you're going in the right path so they saw they were beautiful so they took for themselves such women as they chose now maybe it would be possible in those days for those spirits to have that strength to be able to do this but, but maybe this is just lies again my life-giving spirit shall not remain in man forever he is for this part is mortal flesh he shall live for 120 years So this is when the Lord decided that, okay, man, you're not going to live for 900 years anymore. You, you're doing too much damage to yourselves. Okay, now it's all part of God's plan. Um, but in a sense, it is down to the free will of all the souls as well. So it's kind of a bit of both, really. In those days when the sons of gods had intercourse with the daughters of men, if that was possible and got children by them, the Nephilim were on earth. They were heroes of old, men of renown. So I'm not, I'm not sure about this, this part here. This could be so made up. When the Lord saw that man had done much evil on earth, and that his thoughts and inclinations were always evil, he was sorry he made man on earth, and he was grieved at the heart. He said, This race of men who have I created, I will wipe them off the face of the earth. Man and beast, reptiles and birds, I am sorry that I ever made them. But Noah had one Lord's favour. Right, so yeah, in the, this is bullshit, right? You know, God is purely a loving God, and he is so up there, he doesn't make mistakes like this. He, she, does not. So this is, <coughs> this is the bullshit where we get into. So this is, this is man's plan here to make uh, Noah's line, or Lamech, or Methuselah, you know, that line of Seth, apart from Cain, <coughs> to make them renowned, to make them big. So, I mean, you know, this is the story of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, the one blameless man of his time. You know, that's so not true. <clears throat> you know, Cain, Cain was one of Adam and Eve's <coughs> children. He, he, he did that. You know, Lamech later took two wives. That was in Cain's line. You know, there was the sin there. You know, Adam and Eve had lots of other children. Seth had lots of other children. They all had lots of other children. They would have been mostly good. So this is this is one part in, in Noah trying to get this 777 curse on them. And it's a lie. And that's when, that's when the truth was taken away from the humans. And um, as I've said in other videos, the most destructive force in the universe is false beliefs. And this created all these false beliefs that God would wipe everybody off. But it's just a book, right? It's just words. It's just the only words that have survived. But luckily, within them, has survived some truth. And I would say I'd rather have had the Bible than not had the Bible. Because, you know, there is there is a lot in here. But, the, you know, this is right at the beginning of the Bible. So, that's what I wanted to say. Um, you know, and this this still... This still goes on to this day. The, the other interesting thing here 
is about Noah and his sons. So supposedly, according to the Bible, everybody else has been wiped out. Noah is the only one left. So according to this bullshit, there would be no descendants of Cain left on the earth. Which I don't think is true. The sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham and Japheth. Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. Now, when Noah, right, yeah, <clears throat> Noah remembers and began planting vineyards, he drank some of the wine, became drunk, and lay naked inside his tent. When Ham, father of Canaan, saw his father naked, he told his two brothers outside. So Shem and Japheth took a cloak, put it on their shoulders, and walked backwards, and so covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way, so that they did not see their father naked. When Noah woke from his drunken sleep, he learnt what his youngest son had done to him, and he said, Cursed be Canaan, that son of Ham, slave of slaves, shall he be to his brothers. And continued, Bless, O Lord, the tents of Shem, so he's cursed Ham, blessed Shem, and may God extend Japheth bounds, let him dwell in the tents of Shem, may Canaan be their slave. So Japheth sort of seems to get off with it. So in a sense it's here that you know you get this division. Now maybe, so that would indicate that their plan didn't work, no one got cursed to a point where they would be avenged 777 fold. That would have been too much. 77 was enough for, for that part of the population. <clears throat> so in a sense what Noah's tried to do here is for his descendants um, put one above the other and everything else to make them have a good life and he's just you know playing God really isn't he and okay I'm going to carry on because there's another interesting bit but I just want to say here that Canaan was the father now remember Canaan was Ham so this is the cursed one Canaan was the father of Sidon who was the eldest son and Heth of the Jebusites the Amorites the Girgashites, the Hivites, the Hiv Hivites, the Archites, the Sinites, the Avadites, the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. Later, the Canaan spread, and the Canaanite borderlands and Sidon, blah, 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 way to Gaza, and all the way to Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These were the sons of Ham. So I think that's quite interesting that, you know, obviously there are lots here. Now, the sons of Ham. Oh, there were more, sorry. Sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put and Canaan. Sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Ramah. Sons of Ramah, Sheba and Dadan. Cush was the father of Nimrod. He began to show himself as man of might on the earth and mighty hunter before the Lord. And saying so goes, like Nimrod, mighty hunter before the Lord. So that was still in the cursed ones. But his kingdom in the beginning consisted of Babel, Erech, Akkad. Sons of Japheth, Goga, Goma, Magog, Madai. I, I just read these because some of them some of them ring some bells. It's these sons of Shem. Brother of Shem. Sons of Shem, Elam, Asher. Afarax, Lud, Aram, Uz, Hul, Eber, Joktan, anything I recognise, Sheba, uh, Mesha. No, I haven't really heard of them, have we? But they were the blessed ones anyway. Now, This changes now, so we're still in Genesis 10, 12. We're still right at the beginning of the Bible, okay? Still right at the beginning. Now the Lord calls Abraham. Now this is when 
God changes completely. You know, in the beginning, the Bible, you know, they're saying Enoch walked with God. They, they, you know, they knew God by name. The Lord says to Abraham, leave your own country, your kingsmen and your father's house and go to a country that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make your name. So Abraham must have been a descendant of Shem. Shem's descendants, yes. So in the end, from Shem we get to Abraham. And we know in a bit he changes his name to Abraham. Oh, I wonder why he adds that ham there. <laughs> Interesting. So now this is Noah in his spirit body after he died coming down and trying to still trying to sort of tweak things to make to make his line great basically that that's what this is all about so what's that that's um that is uh what do you call it when you're jealous, aren't you, really? You're jealous of something somebody else has got. Now, and we all know what happens after Abraham. Well, during Abraham, you know. I mean, the fact that Noah sort of gets him right to the point of, of, of killing his son. Abraham's new name. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him, Noah, and said, I am God Almighty, lie, live always in my presence and be perfect, so that I might set my covenant between myself and you and multiply your descendants. It's all about, you know, tweaking this. Abraham threw himself down on his face and God spoke with him and said, I make this. See, now God. All right. Okay, so it says in the beginning, uh, like Enoch walked with God. Okay, so, you know, that could be taken as, you know, he's got God in his mind. He doesn't actually say at that point that God says any words. You know, God sets these was setting these rules and doing these things but it's different like he's now he speaks with words now the real god is purely soul all feeling so wouldn't have a body to speak with uh i make this covenant and i make it with you you shall be father of a host of nations your name shall no longer be abraham you should be abraham for i make you father of a host of nations I will make you exceedingly fruitful, I will make nations that right. So this is Noah's doing, <clears throat> you know, made with the help of his father as well. So then he's, uh, God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, I shall call her not Sarah, but Sarah, I will bless, yeah, so they change it from S-A-R-A-I to S-A-R-A-H, and Ra, well that's something that comes out in Egyptian times, isn't it? I'll bless her and give you a son by her. Anyway, that's going to be Isaac. And then he does that thing where he's about to kill Isaac. Now, what happens here? Because it seems like other spirits get involved. Ah, you know what he might be doing? No, at this point, to get Abraham to kill Isaac might be making him to do this sin that would make him cursed and, you know, get that 777 thing. But it, but it never happens because God ain't going to let it happen, right? Where is it? Sorry about the pause. I don't know where it is. Anyway, we know. We know. I have read it. He was about to kill. He was about to kill Isaac. And then something happens. Someone comes. The birth of Isaac. Okay, so he's been born. Born. Uh, God tests Abraham. This is what, you know, it says it's a test. Stay here with the ass while I and the boy go over here. And when we come back, we will come back. So Abraham took the wood to the sacrifice, laid, on, laid it on his son Isaac's shoulder. He himself carried the fire and the knife, and the two of them went together. Isaac said to Abraham, Father, and he answered, What is it, my son? And Isaac said, Here is the fire and wood, but where is the fine young beast for the sacrifice? Abraham answered, God will provide himself with a young beast for sacrifice, my son. And the two of them went together. So I mean, like, oh, that must feel awful. There Abraham built an altar and arranged the wood, and he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. He stretched out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. This is an angel of the Lord 
whereas before Abraham's thinking he's speaking to the Lord. Here I am. The angel of the Lord said, Do not raise your hand against the boy. Do not touch him. Now I know that you are a God-fearing man. You have not withheld me from your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there he saw a ram caught by its horns in a thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it to the sacrifice instead of his son. So an angel, another spirit, you know, good spirit, got involved to stop him from doing that. Which would have been... <laughs> makes me shiver. I hate that bit. I hate that bit. So, yeah, and then, you know, like I say, we're still in the very beginning of the Bible. I'm not going to go through any more now. Because... You know, this that was that's the stuff that was going on in the beginning of the world. Okay? And it's still still today. The the full truth hasn't been uncovered. It will be uncovered. It's God's plan that it all should be, and it will be in all good time. And I reckon there's about seven billion souls. I mean, maybe there's eight billion. I don't know how many. <laughs> how many souls do you think God would have made? Because apparently there's a finite number of souls. So when all the souls have had some experience, when there aren't any waiting left, okay, maybe it's a hundred billion. I don't know, but I think God would have planned the size of the earth to cope with all of them, or at least you know because. And I say 7 billion souls, That if we're all half souls, that's 14 billion. Now it is true that of all the number of people alive today, is equal to all the number of people who have lived and died already. It's like the uh, grains of rice on a chessboard. You double them, you double them, you double them, right? So the, the one preceding is half as much as you've got there. Am I making sense? Can you see that? That there would be 7 billion people roughly who have lived and died. Uh, the same about people who are here now. The old seven thing, you know, the old seven thing comes in, doesn't it? <clears throat> so let's just say the last soul, the last unincarnated soul, a soul that has not become conscious yes, yet, given birth onto the earth, then we are surely in the the judgment day, whatever you want to call it. I have a firm belief that God is going to make himself, him and herself, known to everyone. So everyone will not have a single doubt, because all people in the spirit world can kind of see what's going on on the earth. So they will not have a doubt that God exists. Because at the moment there's still people in the spirit world they don't know that God exists. They don't believe God exists. It's you wonder what they do believe. But um, when that when that happens, <clears throat> we will all all be here already, and uh, I think it's wonderful. I think it's awesome. Um, I'm glad I was born in the time I was born in. Um, why not? Um, and here we are. So uh that's that. Thanks. Good night.